Hello, my name is Deacon Jim Keating, Professor of Spiritual Theology here at Kenrick Glennon Seminary. And today I just want to share a few thoughts with you on the topic of emotional worry. This topic is pretty common and it uh, really does uh, concern people a lot regarding their interior state and uh, makes us uh, anxious and uh, sometimes makes us feel like uh, God isn't listening to us if the worry lingers on and stays for a time. But I just want to reflect with you on one possible way of diminishing worry and um, at the same time a possible way of deepening our faith in the power of the resurrection and the power of the Eucharist. Worry sometimes uh, really fills our heads, uh, concern over other people, concern over our own uh, life situation, and it becomes quite burdensome. And surprisingly, uh, we bring this worry to Jesus as a, um, a recording in our head many times. We make prayer a time of anxiety, of sharing these worries with Jesus. And they just go over and over again in our, in our head. And so then prayer just becomes more time for worry rather than time for healing or time for peace. And it's an affliction. It's not something that uh, is a moral fault per se. Uh, it can really be an emotional affliction. And that's why Jesus wants to step up and help diminish that a little bit wants to carry, if you will, our worries for us. But we do have to deepen our faith, particularly around perhaps this scripture here that's on the screen, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. This is Jesus's, one of Jesus' deepest desires, is to give us rest and not to have our worries continually circulating, processing them over and over again in the echo chamber of our minds. I offer you just one image of the mailbox that perhaps can help us imagine what Jesus wants to do with our uh, su succession of worries. When we mail a letter, we go to the mailbox, and we place it in the mailbox, and we leave. It'd be very odd if we waited around the mailbox for the mail person to come and empty the contents of that box, and then further follow the mail truck in our car to make sure that the envelope that we mailed was properly delivered to the right recipient. And then further, to wait on that recipient's front porch, if you will, until he or she opened the door to retrieve the mail and take our letter. The very notion of that seems absurd. Why did you mail the letter in the first place? If you don't trust that the one you gave it to will do what is proper and uh, purposeful with that letter. Once we drop the letter in the mailbox, what I call the proper receptacle here in the PowerPoint slide, we normally just forget about it and trust that soon it will be delivered. Spiritually, Christ's heart is the proper receptacle for our worries. Christ's heart is the proper receptacle for our worries. And we should treat Christ's heart at least as trustingly as we treat the post office. Once it's placed in his heart, the proper receptacle, he will take care of it. Some people then ask, well, didn't Jesus tell us to keep asking? Isn't that part of the revelation of Scripture? 
Here in the PowerPoint, you see a quote from Luke 11. If he does not get up to give him the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up and give him what he needs because of his persistence. Ask and you will receive. My point is that persistence is not the same as obsession and control. Obsession and control is the burden that Christ wants to relieve within us. Persistence is the Blessed Virgin Mary. And her persistence was in the form of deep trust born of a relationship that she had with her son. At the wedding feast of Cana, she had a worry, if you will, a concern. She had an intercessory prayer that she wanted to bring to her son. This concern was a true and authentic need. And she went to her son after doing one simple thing. She noticed the need. Then she mentioned the need to her son. She didn't even question or beg. She just noticed they have no wine. And because she was depositing what she noticed in the, the greatest receptacle of love that ever existed, the Sacred Heart of Jesus, she could trust that her son would do with what she was noticing what was proper, what was for the good of all. Such trust was born again of her relationship. She noticed a need, she spoke it, and then she went on with her business. In other words, she took her worry to the proper receptacle, trusted that the Sacred Heart of Jesus loved understood and had already seen the need so deeply that he was already working on it. And her role was to wait in trust, not continually visit the worry, the concern over and over again in her own mind. The place to seek relief of these obsessive worries in our minds, and so we can stop turning them over and over again, oddly enough, is the resurrection of Jesus. And we access the resurrection of Jesus very locally, one might even say very conveniently, at the Eucharist. To seek relief from our worries, we are to turn toward the resurrection. Famous spiritual writer, Father Contum La Mesa, once said, Christ does not come back to life, to his old life, like Lazarus in the resurrection, to die over again sometime later. Christ comes forward to life in a new world, to an irreversible victory over death. This is the power that Jesus wants to share with us to overcome our worries. Precisely the power of going forward. Blessed Virgin Mary, at the wedding feast of Cana, noticed the need, the worry, mentioned it to her son, and went forward in the power of trusting in her son. Of course, this trust is born of our relationship. So in order for our trust to deepen, we need to deepen our prayer life as well. With the resurrection, Jesus takes all of our worries and fears because he has entered the very origin of fear and worry itself, death. 
And once he was inside death, he exploded all fear and worry because he, being life and love itself, tamed death, emptied it of its power, redirected our fears into hope. And even our little worries like, will our child graduate from school? Will I have enough money to buy Christmas gifts? A nagging physical problem that worries you about your physical health. All these flow from death. All these flow from our limit, our finitude, our sin. All worry is in some way associated with the fear and the anxiety of dying, of not being perfect, of not being immortal. And Jesus has entered not simply our worries, but he has entered the very origin of our fears and worries. Hence the resurrection, where death can no longer define us, but what now defines us is holy communion with him. My worries, my fears, that's not who I am, even though they fill my mind a great deal. My worries and my fears are to be laid down at Jesus' feet and never taken up again, because he is now working on them, working on what is best for all. Wrongly at times, we believe that these fears consume us as our identity. Faith tells us holy communion is our identity, a communion that lessens our capacity, necessity, and maybe even desire to worry. For in that holy communion, we note through faith how God is caring for us. Sometimes we get confused and think that worry is a sign that we love. Well, if my daughter is struggling with something, shouldn't I worry about her 24 hours a day? Shouldn't I be concerned? Shouldn't I be anxious or fearful that she will fail? She will get hurt in some way? And so we begin to equate worry with love. I'm a good mother because I worry a lot. Love and worry are not coextensive. In fact, they are the opposite. At one point, Jesus said that love and worry could never exist together because perfect love cast out all fear. And yet these fears continue to bother us until we learn in faith how, through the intercession of Mary, to notice the needs of our daughter and to lay them or place them in Jesus' sacred heart, especially at the Mass. Sometimes these worries about our physical health, our finances, our children are like the bees that are mentioned in the Psalms. They surrounded me on every side. In the Lord's name, I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They burned up like fire among thorns. In the Lord's name, I cut them off. I was hard pressed and falling, but the Lord came to my help. The Lord, my strength, his might, has become my savior. It's pretty common to have our worries circle us in this way, consume us in this way. But notice the Psalm keeps saying, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. These are his worries now. And we must ask the Lord for the particular grace to truly believe that fear is useless and that worry is not a sign of love. 
but it is simply a sign of being alone, feeling powerless, maybe feeling emotionally isolated, very opposite of love. So we must go to the source, the font of love, and place all of these worries and fears into it. Just thinking about someone's problems does not help. Just ruminating over what pain our loved ones might be in is not a solution. We go to where solutions are made. And the solutions are made, most powerfully, in the provident love of God, who is always thinking of us. Can we ask the Lord, perhaps, to heal us of thinking that if we worry about things, we are being productive? There is no productivity in worry. There's only the raising of blood pressure or stress or maybe even bringing us near depression or anger at our powerlessness. These are all, as Jesus said in the scripture, useless. And he wants to cast them out through his love. So worry is not love. Worry is being bound, being bound to isolation. We cannot believe that we are the authors of goodness through worry by constantly thinking about our problems. Instead, the Eucharist is waiting. It is the place where we lay these worries to rest. The Eucharist has the power. Our worries have no power. Worrying makes nothing happen. But the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus makes all things come to life and move us away from dead and dying things. Where is this crucifixion and resurrection? Of course, it's in our parish church every day of the week. We could literally go to Jesus and receive the power of the resurrection every day of the week in our bodies. Worry makes nothing happen. The more we go to Jesus in the power of the resurrection at Mass, the more we tap into the greatest power. Staying in communion with him in a disposition of gratitude. Blessed Father Solanus Casey, one of our American saints, said very simply, thank God ahead of time. Thank God ahead of time. In other words, trust him so deeply that when you place your son and all of his difficulties into the Eucharistic Lord, don't keep asking and asking, please take care of my son, please take care of my son. Just place your son there and say, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Should be one of our deepest and most heartfelt prayers like the one leper who returned after noticing his healing. Where are the other nine, said Jesus. Jesus wanted to remain in relationship with those 10 lepers. He didn't just um, become upset because someone didn't thank him. He wanted them to know that life and life to the full and the draining out of fears whether it's physical health or emotional health or financial health, the draining out of fears is solved in holy communion with Jesus. Solved 
with remaining in communion as a grateful believer. This, of course, happens and becomes secured in our hearts in this power of the Mass. A couple of questions. Are we allowing the resurrection and its power to affect our emotional dispositions and thought patterns? Or do we think that the resurrection and its power is some abstraction, uh, something maybe in the historical past? Do you really believe that you're receiving God? And do you really believe that God is concerned with what you worry about, what you think about? He is love. He is life. He has conquered all fear. And that's happening in your local parish church every Sunday or every weekday when you go to Mass. Faith teaches us that Christ secures our life, even through death. When we die, we believe that because we're in Christ, death won't touch us hold us, imprison us. We have to pass through it, but it never defines us. In small ways, why are we letting death define us by worry? Worry is a little bit of death. Fear is a little bit of death. Are we in Christ? And if we are, do we believe that death can't touch us because life is defining us. This is why we can entrust even our smallest worries to Jesus because he has already overcome our greatest fear. What's animating your body, faith or worry? Very practically, I'll just conclude with four points. How shall the Eucharist relieve our worry? First, before Mass begins, find some silence and let whatever is burdening you to rise up. Just like Mary noticed, they have no wine. Lay it at the feet of Christ. You just have to note it. You don't have to analyze it. You don't have to think about it in a disproportionate way. Just let it rise up. What am I worried about? Just note it. Secondly, at the time during the Mass that you feel inspired to do so, the offertory, the uh, elevation of the host, the intercessory prayer, perhaps, at the time that you think is best, place the worry that you noticed into the most sacred heart of Jesus. Simply say, like Mary, Joe needs a job. I need to have this healing. Sam is lonely. Just notice and then give it over to Jesus. Let it rise and then pass it over to Jesus' love for you. Third, use the Mass as an intentional time to release these concerns into Christ's heart. Of course, during the day, the worry may come back. But instead of thinking about it again, instead of rolling it over in our minds again, just recall, oh, I gave this to Jesus already at the daily mass. Jesus is already attending to this. And then go forward in the resurrection, just like Mary. Don't hang around dead and dying things. Go forward in the resurrection. Oh, I already gave this financial concern to Jesus in the Mass. That means Jesus is already attending 
to this worry. And then go forward with your day. And finally, to be burdened, to be worrisome, is pretty common, but it's not God's will for you. So as your healing progresses through the power of the resurrected Christ at the Eucharist, you too can tell others about this source and direct them to the place where Christ wants to overcome our sins and our worries and our fears and our concerns. As First Peter says, cast all your worries upon him because he cares for you. Evangelize them. When you hear people worry or be fearful, direct them to the source. Direct them to the place. Direct them to the person, to the mystery that can carry all of their worries and fears into life and leave dead and dying things behind. It's not God's will for us to be burdened he wants to relieve the burden. Let's pray that a new trust will rise in our hearts and that we will believe him, that he has come to relieve our burdens. And now we know the place to meet him so that those burdens will no longer burden us ever again. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, deepen my faith. Thank you.